Good morning, Church. I'm Tanya Arneson, Senior Pastor of Jackson First United Methodist Church, and I'm so happy to welcome you to virtual worship for Sunday, June the 7th, 2020. Jackson First Church is an inclusive, intergenerational community of faith who love God with our hearts and our hands and our voices. We're so glad you're with us today, and I hope you'll join us for in-person worship when we can safely do so. Each week during the COVID-19 crisis, we've shared virtual communion together. It's a way to remind us that though we are scattered and dispersed right now, we are still united by the love of God. So I invite you to find a morsel of bread or a cracker and a sip of something, water or juice, so you can share with us. Today is known as Trinity Sunday in the Christian Church. It's a day of praise and giving glory to God for the mystery of the Trinity, God the Father, Creator, God the Son, Redeemer, God the Holy Spirit, Advocate. One God, expressed and experienced in three different ways. I'd like to open with prayer this morning, and if you're able, I invite you to stand. We stand in awe of you, O God. We rejoice that you have chosen us to be your own. By your word, the heavens were made. Your loving kindness fills the whole earth. By the bounty of your mercy, we have been born to new life. Hear now what fanfare we give you as we lift our voices in praise of your name. Please be seated. Our first lesson is Psalm 8, read by one of our worship assistants, Earl Pileski. Then we'll hear hear a song of praise based on Psalm 8 called In All the Earth. It's with beautiful pictures. I think you'll really enjoy it. The piece is written by John Alexander Wilson of Sing Psalms and published by the Free Church of Scotland. It's used by permission of the author. Hello, this is Earl Pileski, and this is a reading of Psalm 8 the New International Version. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I considered your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Psalm chapter 8.
earth, O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name. For you have set above the hands your glory and your fame. From infants and from children's lips you order praise to sound. To silence all your enemies, the wicked to confound. In all the earth, O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name. For you have said of all the heads, your glory and your fame. When I regard the hands you made, your finger works I trace, and I see the moon and shining stars that you have set in place. I ask myself, what then is man that you would give him thought? A son of man that you to him such gracious care have brought. And all the earth, oh Lord, oh Lord, how glorious is your name. For you have said Our second lesson is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. This is known as the Great Commission. Now, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, 
I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the living word from our living God. Let us all say, thanks be to God. And will you pray with me? Speak to us, creator God, of the wonders of your love. By your Holy Spirit, reveal to us Christ our Lord, that we might grow more in his likeness. Amen. Did you hear the story about the Three Stooges? Mo, Larry, and Curly were given an intelligence test. When it came to the math section of the test, the evaluator asked Curly, What is three times three? Curly did calculations on his hand, and then he marked them off, and then he did it again, and marked it off, and did it again, and he finally said, Three times three is 274. Hmm, the doctor said and wrote down the answer. Then he turned to Larry and asked, what is three times three? Now, Larry was caught daydreaming and didn't hear the question. So the doctor nudged him and said, Larry, answer the question sometime today, please. Larry awakened with a start and said, Tuesday. The doctor said, hmm. He wrote down his answer and turned to Mo. Okay, it's your turn. What's three times three? Mo smiled real big and said, ah, that's easy, nine. That's great, said the doctor. How did you come up with the right answer? It was simple, Mo responded. I subtracted 274 from Tuesday. Now, I'm not very good at math, but I know when something doesn't add up. Like the basic math of the Trinity, one, plus one, plus one, equals one. God is one, yet God is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Each person is equally important, each is fully God, and each is distinct from the other. The Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Spirit. It is confusing, I admit. So how are we supposed to understand this new math? From the kingdom of God. How are we supposed to understand the Trinity? Throughout the history of the church, Christians have struggled to understand this doctrine. The story is told of Saint Augustine, who, while grappling with this mystery, took a break from his studies to walk on the beach. He saw a little boy digging a hole in the sand with a seashell and then running to the ocean, filling the shell, and rushing back to pour it into the hole. What are you doing, little man? Augustine asked. I'm trying to put the ocean into this hole, the boy replied. St. Augustine smiled, finally at peace with his questions, for he realized that to unlock the mystery of the Trinity was like trying to put the ocean in a hole. God is not a riddle to be solved, but a mystery to be adored. A mystery explained ceases to be a mystery. The doctrine of the Trinity remains mysterious because God, the one the Trinity describes, is a mystery. The truth is, all we know about God is what God has chosen to reveal to us. God has revealed God's self to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why? Perhaps because the fullness of God is too big for us to grasp all at once, we need to experience God in concrete ways we can relate to. And relationship is the key. God wants to be known, loved, and worshipped, so God has revealed himself to humanity through scripture, reason, tradition, and experience as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. First, we looked at God the Father, creator and sustainer of the universe. Psalm 8 reminds us that God is creator of all that is, from the tallest mountain to the smallest molecule, every aspect of the universe, stars and sun and moon and the very breath we breathe, God created it all. God is the force and the energy behind everything that is, was, or ever will be. 
in the beginning, there was God. Now, some folks are convinced the universe came into being by accident for no apparent reason. The stew pot of juices and chemicals was randomly set off with a big bang, and the universe just happened. Frankly, I have trouble believing creation is an accident. Creation fits together. It's too well-ordered to be random. It's actually easier for me to believe in a God who created the universe with a plan and a purpose. For instance, the monarch butterfly begins as a fuzzy caterpillar which weaves a cocoon, then emerges as a beautiful winged creature. Amazingly, that butterfly instinctively knows to fly over 200 miles to escape the winter. Accident? I don't think so. Look at the dairy cow. No matter what science and technology have accomplished, they have not yet figured out how to turn grass into milk. O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. God the Father is the source and sustainer of the universe. God created the world with a purpose and plan and said, It is good. Next, God received, uh, revealed God's self as God the Son, Jesus, our rescuer, the one who has reconnected humanity to God. Remember, we were created to be in loving relationship with God and to care for, to be stewards of our creator's creation. Psalm 8 says, When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that, that you should be mindful of them, mortals that you should care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the work of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. But we have not lived as our creator intended us to live. Like children, we rebelled against God, pursued our own selfish purposes, and sought our own way rather than following the ways of our Creator. We were lost and needed to be found. We were wandering in darkness and needed to be shown the way back to our Heavenly Father. So God revealed himself in Jesus, the Son, our Redeemer, who is the way back to God. The story of, is told of a little boy. It was one of those pitch black nights. The rain pelted against the windows and the wind howled through the trees. From the quiet of his room, a small boy cried out, Daddy, I'm scared. Still half asleep, Daddy responded, You don't need to be afraid. Daddy's right across the hall. There was a brief pause. And the voice cried out again, I'm still scared. A little more awake this time, Daddy replied, You don't need to be afraid. God is with you and God loves you. This time the pause was longer, but the voice cried out again, But Daddy, I want someone with skin on. We were disconnected from our Creator, lost and wandering in the darkness of sin, and God decided the best way to bring us back was to send someone with skin on. So Jesus wrapped himself in flesh and blood, stepped out of heaven, and became one of us. He walked where we walk. He lived as we live. Then he gave his life on the cross. He wrapped himself in our pain and suffering. In doing so, he showed us that God the Father will do whatever it takes to rescue and reclaim his beloved children. But God in skin did not forever remain physically present to us. After his crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus ascended back to heaven. However, before his death, he promised the Father would send his Son, uh, his Holy Spirit, the Advocate, to remind us of all the things Jesus had told them. Last week on Pentecost, we celebrated 
the gift of the Holy Spirit, which sustains and perfects us as we grow more and more like Christ. The prayer of St. Patrick beautifully describes the work of the Holy Spirit of Christ. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mind of friend and stranger. The Spirit of Christ strengthens us in difficult times, reminds us of all Christ taught us. The Spirit corrects and chastises us when we stray, enables us to overcome temptation, and empowers us to carry out the ministry of Christ. Today is Trinity Sunday. We are invited to learn a mysterious new math. One plus one plus one equals one. God has chosen to reveal himself in three ways, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But God also reveals himself another way, through you and me. As Jesus descended into heaven, he gave us this commission, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. As such, Jesus has entrusted us with a vital message and given us a new purpose for our lives. We are to teach others about the mysteries of faith, and we are to reveal the living God to the world. We share the good news and reflect the goodness and love of God to others. It was shortly after World War II had ended. Europe had been ravaged by war and was in ruins. Children were left orphaned to live and starve in the streets. Early one chill chilly morning, an American soldier was making his way back to the barracks. As he turned the corner, he spotted a little boy with his nose pressed to the window of a pastry shop. Inside, the cook was kneading dough for a fresh batch of doughnuts. The hungry boy stared in silence, watching every move. The soldier pulled his jeep to the curb, stopped, got out, and walked quietly over to where the boy was standing. The boy salivated and released a slight groan as he watched the cook pull those warm doughnuts out of the oven. The soldier's heart was filled with compassion, and he asked, Son, would you like some of those? The boy startled. But he said, oh, yes, sir, I would. The American bought a dozen donuts, handed them to the boy, and then turned to walk away. But he felt a tug on his coat, and he heard the boy ask, Mister, are you God? Likewise, you and I reflect most fully the love of God when we give and share with others unselfishly. No question. The Trinity is a mystery, and no explanation will ever be large enough or thorough enough to satisfy us. But consider this. If we had all the answers, no faith would be required of us. If we could thoroughly grasp the things of God, then we have limited God to our intellectual powers. I don't know about you, but a God I can fully conceive is too small to be worthy of my worship and praise. We will never fully understand the Trinity, but this we do know. Christ Jesus has given us a purpose. We are called to be reflections of God's love in the world. And Christ has entrusted us with a message to tell others about the mystery and wonder of God the Father and Creator of all things, the Son who reconnects a lost world with our Creator and the Holy Spirit who sustains and perfects us 
as we strive to become more and more like Christ. Let us reflect together on the Trinity as we hear the first and last verse of the great hymn, Holy, 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 from Tim Munier and Jackie Livesay. thank all of you for your continued faithful support of our ministry. Our church building may be closed for the time being, but the work of the church goes on and is more important than ever in these troubling times. You can donate in three ways. Send a check to the church, set it up, um, set up a regular electronic fund transfer, or arrange for a one-time credit card donation with Teresa Oldenburg, our treasurer. Just call the office, hit the donut, donate button on your screen, and you'll be directed to PayPal. Through your giving, you are helping sustain the ministries that people in our community and around the world depend upon. Thank you in advance for your generosity. And now let us go to God in prayer. Holy three in one. We bring our prayers to you, remembering how small our problems may be in the scheme of things, but hoping you will hear how large they are in our hearts. We pray for the people who lo we love who are suffering, for victims of injustice, violence, and civil unrest, for those who work for peace and justice for all persons. For the heroes who press for change in systems and institutions that exclude or devalue any human life. For strangers who are rebuilding their lives after disaster. Or for a world torn by conflict where attacks happen for no reason and for terrible reasons. For a deeper understanding of you for the strength to love and act on that love, for the energy to be faithful in a time when being church is hard, for the determination to be your people when the label Christian doesn't always sound like who we are and what we believe about you. Holy One in Three, sometimes we know you best in the wonders of what you have created. Sometimes we know you best in the assurance of your forgiveness. Sometimes we know you best in the whispers inspiring and provoking us to deeper understanding. We pray to serve with the gifts you have given us, to love with the love you show us, to forgive with generous hearts as you have first forgiven us, to grow in faith, Remembering there is always 
a next step to reach. We thank you for all the ways you make yourself known to us in the beauty of this spring morning, in your comfort when darkness covers us, in the life of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you have a, a morsel and a sip at hand. When we're together in person, the sacrament of Holy Communion is about remembrance. When we're sheltering at home, this simple morsel and sip is a comforting reminder that Christ is still and always in our midst, wherever we are. As he shared his final meal with his friends, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, then shared it with his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat together, remember me. After the supper, he took the cup. And he thanked God for the gift of the fruit of the vine and then offered it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, my life poured out for you. Whenever you drink of it together, remember me. And so in remembrance of Christ and to acknowledge our connection with one another, we share in this time of remembrance. Let us eat together. And let us drink together. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for this holy mystery that in the ordinary elements of a sip and a morsel, somehow you are with us in extraordinary ways. Continue to bless us and to nourish us by your life that we might live for you. Amen. I hope to see you again for virtual worship next Sunday when I'll begin my summer sun, uh, my summer sermon series uh, based on John Ortberg's book, The Life You've Always Wanted, Spiritual Disciplines for Ordinary People. I've posted a link to um, Amazon where you can purchase that book. I hope that you will do so so that you can read along um, with us as we study the book together. Each Sunday during our virtual worship, we'll watch portions of a video from the author, and my sermon then will expand on a chapter from Ortberg's book. I'll post weekly questions for your reflection on our Facebook page, and I'm going to host a weekly Zoom meeting to reflect on um, how you've engaged the content I encourage you to purchase this book. It's a marvelous one, very accessible and easy to understand. And I want all of us during this time of sheltering to take this opportunity to go deeper in our faith. In the meantime, join us, uh, join us on noon, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a devotional we call Food for Thought. And if you are young or young at heart, I do a children's story time on Monday and Thursday at 4 p.m. Also, you can find that on our Facebook page or on our website or on YouTube and just um, search for First UMC Jackson. My friends, until we meet again, be blessed, be well, and know you are beloved. We may not know what our future holds, but we do know the one the Holy One in three in one who holds the future. Amen. <laughs>